Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Asymmetric investing is all about finding companies that have phenomenal return potential. 10x is always the bar that I'm looking for when I'm looking at a stock. Is there the possibility that this stock could 10x over the next 10 years? And there are three stocks I'm going to cover today that I think do have 10x potential over the next decade. They're phenomenal growth companies and the industry trends behind them, I think are extremely favorable. So if you're interested in some asymmetric stocks, stick around. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And I want to thank this video's sponsor, The Motley Fool. Check out fool.com slash ASYM for their top 10 stocks to buy right now. The first company I want to talk about is Spotify. And this may not be the kind of growth company that you would normally think of with 10x potential, but there are a number of changes that have come to Spotify over just the last couple of years. One is the company is raising prices and we're seeing tremendous growth in its user base. I will get to those numbers in just a second. But the number of users that it has is now over half a billion users. We could see in the next three or four years, the company pass a billion people using this service on a monthly basis. But the more exciting change for Spotify is the company's move into podcasting, audiobooks, and advertising. Ultimately, if they're going to increase their profit margins, they're going to have to do that by inserting more advertisements into their products. So growing the number of free users that they have, not just premium users, but free users and monetizing through advertisements is going to be a powerful way for them to grow. They have some really interesting tools like artificial intelligence. So you could have a celebrity read an advertisement that you're making for a local company and then just target local customers. So a lot of opportunity to grow, but this is future growth that we're going to see with Spotify. It's not something that's necessarily priced into the stock right now. So I want to get to a couple of metrics that I'm looking for at Spotify specifically. This is a look at Spotify's most important metrics. And a couple that I want to highlight here are these total monthly active users year over year growing 26% on the total active user number ad supported, which is those free users growing 32% and premium users growing 16%. So just a phenomenal growth rate in the number of people using their products. Premium subscriptions not quite growing as quickly, but remember this is gonna be before the price increases that were announced a couple of months ago. Those will hit next quarter, so we should see this growth rate tick up a little bit. And then also we have most of this growth happening in international countries, which aren't quite as high a price point as the US or Europe. So may take a little bit longer to increase those financials from premium subscribers, but the trends are really undeniable. On the ad supported side, we're starting to see growth pick up 16% growth year over year. So that's a really solid number. I think we will see that pick up even more in the coming quarters as they introduce more of these artificial intelligence tools, as they target ads a little bit better, because this is really where management is spending a lot of time investing and trying to grow in the future. Their margins are also getting a lot better. So they're starting to get those costs under control. Free cash flow now $216 million last quarter. So the business is trending in the right direction. And I think the momentum tells us that Spotify is going to be a company that's going to be able to keep this momentum intact and actually both grow both revenue and margins as we have more bundling of products and more advertisements as part of the revenue mix. The second stack that I think has a ton of potential is Zillow. Zillow is the housing platform that a lot of people use to look for houses and even just see what the value of their house is worth with, with their Zestimate. But the big change over just the last month is the fact that the National Association of Realtors was found guilty of colluding to keep prices high for real estate agents, specifically the buyer side agent. So this could ultimately break down the combination of the multiple listing services, the buyer's agents, and the seller's agents all working together to keep housing supply in that little ecosystem where they can charge high fees. What is going to happen? Where are you going to list your home? Where are you going to find homes in the future if we move to a more digital platform? Well, I think Zillow is naturally going to be the winner. So they have the opportunity to grow profitably with their current existing model, which is basically an advertising model for real estate agents on their platform. But in the future, they could actually transition to being a place where more and more people are listing their homes, who are finding mortgages, are finding title services, are finding insurance, all of the things that you need when you buy a home. So I think ultimately that is going to provide a lot of tailwinds for Zillow. So the company is facing a number of challenges right now, 
in the housing market just because transactions are down significantly, but there's the opportunity for them to grow long term. The other thing that I the other thing I think is a really positive sign is they're increasing their rental revenue. If Zillow becomes the place that you're going to find either a rental or a home to buy, it's the housing app that you go to that you open first before anybody else. That's ultimately going to be a phenomenally valuable position. Housing is a $47 trillion business in the US. So even just taking a tiny fraction of that as revenue for Zillow could make this easily a 10x company and maybe even more depending if they become the platform of choice for people buying and selling homes. So I really love Zillow's position and I like it even more just in the past week. The third stock is a company that you may not have heard of depending on where you live and that is Portillo's. Portillo's is a restaurant company. They specialize in hot dogs and beef sandwiches, but the economics of their restaurants are just phenomenal. I'm going to get into those, some of those numbers from the recent investor presentation they gave. This is Portillo's revenue numbers at a high level. You can see that grown from 455 million in revenue in 2020 to the last 12 months, $643 million in revenue. They're profitable from a restaurant level EBITDA standpoint. They have, I believe it's 78 locations right now. So this $151 million in adjusted EBITDA means that they're generating about $2 million per year in adjusted EBITDA per location. They have one restaurant that is generating $17 million in revenue. That's in Texas. That's where they're having a lot of their expansion is in the Sunbelt states. So this was a company that was primarily focused in the Chicago area, and they've gone on to expand into other parts of the country. And that's ultimately where they're seeing a lot of growth. You can see a few of their outlook numbers here. This is the long-term financial targets. Unit growth, 12 to 15% annually and same-store restaurant growth in the low single digits. So they're targeting mid-teens growth. But I think if you hit these numbers, you could grow revenue 20% per year. If you do that for a decade, there's that is the way that you 10X as a stock just phenomenal unit economics and they're, and they're learning more and more about how to be more efficient with what they're building and then how to monetize that. They're building smaller locations, locations that are built just for drive up and pick up and drive through so you don't have that same space inside the restaurant. And if you've ever been to a Portillo's, they're a wild operation. They have two drive through lanes that depending on the time of, the time of day can have dozens of cars waiting to get orders. So I love this restaurant. I love the growth story. It reminds me a lot of Chipotle 15 years ago. That's why Portillo's is a company that I think could 10X over the next 10 years. So each of these companies has a ton of growth potential and I think a lot of industry tailwinds behind them. Spotify is leaning into being the audio service that everybody uses for everything from podcasts to now audiobooks. They're bundling a lot more of those services together, making more money from premium by increasing their prices in the U.S., I think we'll see more of that over the next 10 years. They can get those premium margins up to about 30% and then add advertising, which could be margins in excess of 35 to 50%. I think that could be a phenomenal growth business and be, and be much more profitable than they are right now on their way to a billion users. Companies that get to a billion users tend to be much more valuable than Spotify is today. Zillow. A lot of industry tailwinds, and I think as we're moving to digitizing more of the housing market, we're going to see a platform is going to have to emerge where sellers and buyers, whether those are homeowners or renters, can all go to find their housing. I think Zillow's the natural winner there. So their financials may be down a little bit over the last couple of years because of the weak housing market, but I think that really starts to turn around. You start to look out five to 10 years if this is able to become a platform stock. So a little bit maybe more risky. Than a company like Spotify, where the future is a little bit more certain. But I think that's what gives you the huge potential in Zillow stock and Portillo's. Restaurant stocks aren't typically the kind of stocks that you think about 10xing in value. But if you find a company that has phenomenal unit economics, like Portillo's does, like, like Chipotle did, and then is able to grow those units year after year, that's the way that you get phenomenal returns. I think Portillo's has a lot of the characteristics of companies who are able to generate market-beating returns in the restaurant space. And if you've ever been to one of their restaurants, you know that it is incredibly busy. Their kitchen is incredibly efficient. And it's just a phenomenally, and it's just a really impressive operation seeing that they could even do $17 million worth of sales at a single store. So 
I really like where they're going. The stock has been volatile over the last year, but you look out a long term, if they can grow in that 15 to 20% range, this is going to be a phenomenal investment that could 10x in value. So those are the stocks that I write, I like right now. Which one is your favorite? Leave your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.